Hello, everybody. My name is Minghui. It's me again. Well, today we're going to be talking about why are earthquakes so hard to predict. Did you ever found out that in a weather forecast, it says that tomorrow at eight thirty-five there will be an earthquake? No, when I turn on the weather forecast for tomorrow's field trip, I always see the weather as sunny, cloudy, windy, or rainy. I don't usually see a lot of places that a lot of forecasts that shows about hurricanes or earthquakes like we do. They just shows up storms and thunder and lights around. They doesn't show us about earthquake and hurricane at all. And if they really does, maybe sometimes they could say that maybe tomorrow there could be a hurricane. Maybe. The next day, it could be a hurricane, but it doesn't know exactly what the time is. Like maybe they could say eight thirty when it happens in eight twenty-five. Science is not always correct, but what about tornado? Do you? Well, what about earthquakes? Did you ever turn out and heard people say? Oh, today I watched the weather forecast, and it says that next week there's going to be an earthquake. No, I have never seen that in my life. Ten years alive in this world, I've never heard about any forecast saying why earthquakes, what time earthquakes happens, and the correct time of it, or an estimation of it. Why are earthquakes so hard to predict? That even or good and improvement earth that improvement forecasts today have like they could detect if tomorrow's or next day, next week's, next month what the weather will be like. They could even guess the degree. Well, why can't they guess those earthquakes? Well, let's go and discover more about why earthquakes are so hard to predict. Let's go. Well, first, I may give you some pictures to look at first because it is pretty important. Okay. I pulled this out so that you guys could see a little bit about this picture. Well, look, this is an Earth that's been drawn to scale. Well, first, look at this. Inside, in the very inside, that's white part. You can see the mouse. If you see it, and look, I'm covering the inner core. We saw it. Well, the inner core inside doesn't really affect. Next, outer core doesn't matter too. Super metal doesn't matter too. But we come to the atmosphere, the rigid mantle, then the crust, then the ice cap. Well, on the Earth, on the surfaces, did you ever see those big rocks lumps up on the ice cap of the Earth? If you have really seen so, then you've probably known what is it. Inside earthquakes, it always happens like that. Earth's crust is made from rocks, right? They are made from several vats. And jack rocks. The Earth cross, the cross that I've just shown you there. Let me just make a copy of this.
Copy. Okay, look. This part here is the cross. That brown part, right? Maybe you guys couldn't see it because it's kind of small to look at there. But that cross is made from vast rocks. And all of them are called tectonic plates. Well, they are strong. Well, those earthquakes are strong enough to cause those deep crack, those crusts, those rocks connected together. But earthquakes happened so, so, so strong that causes those cracks to crack down and to be broken into pairs and they cause it veins and causes those valleys downs that you can sometimes find in some big big mountains and earthquakes are really really hard that sometimes it affects the earth crust and when it affects the earth crust, it will make into that zig 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 zag 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 patterns that you could find when you watch earthquakes. They were strong enough to cause deep cracks in ventratric plates. Like look, this is a picture of a crack, of a deep, deep crack in Kenya. I found it on Google. I don't know if that's a really good picture for you to look at, but I think it is. Then, the intensifying pressure may eliminate trigger in earthquake. The pressure when the earthquakes happens could even eliminate trigger in earthquake. It's hard enough to monitor these minuscule movement. It's hard to monitor those minuscule movements. You couldn't know it. The Earth's crust is kind of hard for you to predict. The earthquakes always happens from the inside of the Earth, and it happens to the crust the first. And it's really hard enough to monitor these minuscule movements. People and scientists and those astronauts, maybe they've gone into space, but they have never come inside the, from the part of the cross inside. Never. They have never come inside the Earth from that part in. It's really, really far. Like now, imagine the, the Earth is like a spare, right? And from the top to the bottom, it counts. And from the two sides connected together, it would be a problem for you to try to get in. And also inside, it's just really, really, really dangerous thing that you could never know. Earthquakes are always really hard to predict. It's not just like if tomorrow's a rain. Like you cannot predict it. Maybe you can predict. But your predicts are not always correct, and sometimes they're not even a little bit correct. Well, when it happens, you could just stand out for what you have known. Run and find a great spot enough to hide from those earthquakes. Don't stand in those places where the places already have some cracks, and don't stay in a kind of shelter or in a kind of platform that already cracks. Yes, and be careful. Even if your places have never had or have never had an earthquake that you've remembered. Like maybe they will be happened, but you've never remembered it. Well even if so, you always need to prepare for all those skills to predict them. I don't say that you must know when an earthquake happens. No, but predicts what will happen to you in an earthquake may 
look great enough to, for you to study, right? Well, why don't you just go and study more about those skills? Not just earthquakes, but hiding in thunderstorms, hurricane storms, and a lots of more. Why not? Studying it sometimes and it will help you for a lifetime. Bye bye. See you next time.